A big warm welcome back to the shop. It has been far, far too long. And I think that we're going to have a really good time moving forward. So once again, thank you for coming back to the shop. I do appreciate you stopping by. I'm always excited to share my hobby with new friends and expand my RC hobby family. And if you like what to, you see today, I encourage you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. It helps the algorithm on YouTube to know that you enjoy my work and that helps me to be able to know what you like and be able to perform provide more of it to you. So moving on, it is hot outside. It is really hot outside. And for those of you who don't know, I am from the Washington DC area. It is very, very humid here all the time. And with it being hot and humid, it's really difficult for me to justify going to the flying field. Then add on top of that, that the flying field the crop at the field is corn this year. It's already taller than me, well taller than me. And so that makes my landing approaches a little less than ideal for some of the larger airplanes. So I, I'm, I'm ready to just call it quits. Flying season is over. And for me, building season has started. Building season starting means that you guys get to see more of what I'm up to. During the summer, I frequently just don't post because I'm busy doing things. I'm doing things with my family. I'm going to events. I'm flying. I'm active. I'm, I'm going out and doing things. And that's great. And I, I, I encourage you guys to do the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's just part of the nature of how I live my life. And I appreciate you bearing with me for those who are along the ride for the long term. So moving forward, though, I want to share with you my plans for the upcoming build season. And I've got three specific projects that I've got in mind. So I'm going to go over to that corner and pick up something and I'll be right back. All right. So this is the wing section of the project. <laughs> this is a, uh, a Hangar 9 B25 Mitchell. And this uh, airplane has been out of production for 15-ish years. Uh, so it's been a while. It's really difficult to find parts for it. Um, however, parts can be found. <laughs> um, so a little bit of back history of this. Uh, uh, it's been uh, in possession by a club member of mine who sold it to me. Uh, it was glow. I have converted it to electric, and I've just done that periodically. And it really wasn't that difficult. There was, uh, th this airplane was designed from the onset to be either glow or electric powered. So it really wasn't that difficult to get specifications from Horizon Hobby to make the conversion. Now I went specifically with uh, electrical stuff from uh, uh, Buddy RC because I'm really, really satisfied with the Sunny Sky motors lately, as well as the ZTW uh, speed controllers that you get there. The programming card works great. Everything is plug and play. And I'm amazingly surprised at how much quieter the, the electrical systems are. Uh, just flying is so, is you hear more of the prop and less of the motor and the bearings and such. So I highly recommend you check those out. Check the link in the description below. Now, one thing also worth noting here is that our good friends at Master Airscrew pitched in some props for us to make the conversion. Uh, the props that originally came with the airplane, the person that I sold the glow motors to wanted to keep the props. It's fine. Uh, I didn't want to use those props anyway. They weren't sized right for the electrical motors. So I needed props and I was able to get a pusher and a tractor prop uh, with the same uh, diameter and pitch. So they are counter rotating, not contra rotating. There is a difference. Look it up with that. Uh, yeah, I've just taken time to get things converted, make the conversion, just do some shakedown stuff. It's been on two flights now and uh, 
the first flight revealed some weaknesses in the aileron servos. I went ahead and replaced both aileron servos. There were Futaba S3010s. I haven't had a good track record with secondhand S3010s. I don't know what it is about S3010s, but they just, they don't center well after a while, uh, especially after a while of sitting. So I've got some fresh servos there. Uh, I did some work with the flaps to get those lined up better too. And I did some lubrication of the Robart system. The, the retracts just need to be freed up. Some other little loose ends here and there that I had to tweak, just minor stuff to get this flying. So at this point it has flown, it's flown well. I'm happy with it. So now the plans moving forward are to strip everything off of this airplane and cover it in fiberglass. Let me go get something and I'll show you what I mean. So what you're looking at here is the fuselage. And as you can see, it's just got lots of flat surfaces. Now, unfortunately with flat surfaces, when they sit in the sun, uh, they don't they don't fare well with this kind of covering. And both times I had this out at the field to fly, uh, the, the covering just bubbled right up. Now, that being said, the, the best solution in my opinion is to just pull all of it off and fiberglass it and paint it. Now I've said that I'm going to do that, but that's not without its own set of headaches and problems. You end up having color match issues. And so the, the control surfaces that are not solid balsa, they will need to be covered in something as well. So I'll likely use Oratex or some other uh, iron-on fabric-like covering that gives it a little bit more texture, be a little bit of a luster change. Uh, but, you know, what's cool about this project is that it's not going to be terribly difficult to accomplish. Again, lots of flat surfaces, so no real compound curves. It's not going to take a tremendous amount of time, though it will be a little bit of effort. Uh, I'm not looking to add any strength, so using the water-based polyurethane or sanding sealer method, it's going to work just fine. And I'm looking forward to having this. It's a nice big airplane, big presence at the field, and our buddy Adam Drain. Uh, if you know Adam, he's a great guy. He's, uh, he's let me know that there's a, an airplane that is being restored that we're pretty sure that there's never been a livery of this particular airplane in an RC form. So I'm planning on doing that. It'll be fun. It'll be an, another olive drab uh, kind of color scheme. So uh, there's that to look forward to as well. All right, so the last tip I wanted to mention on the B-25 before moving on is Park Flyer Plastics. Now, despite this kit airplane being out of production for so long, uh, Keith Sparks over at Park Flyer Plastics still pulling vacuums and uh, all the plastics. I got replacements for all of the plastics. Now, the battery location that is recommended for the airplane is actually <laughs> under the wing. And by doing that, I would have still had to add a whole bunch of lead to the nose. So I just opted to move the batteries forward. And what that means is that my greenhouse canopy for the nose needs to be removable. So I'll be creating a frame that will be able to slide on and off with magnets. And that way the canopy, I can just cut the canopy and go. So I've got some canopy work to be doing, which will be great. I'll get to experiment more with some liquid masking film and I'll be able to shoot a video on that because that's pretty cool stuff. I've never done that before as well as some other things. But yeah, you probably won't see too much of this one because most of the techniques involved I've covered on the channel already. You'll see periodic updates on stuff just to show you that progress is being made and it's another airplane to look forward to as they make the rounds next year. So let's move on to project number two. Those of you who know me well know that my absolute favorite all-time airplane ever is the Curtis SB2C Helldiver. Uh, just 
something that I've grown to love uh, as I've come through aviation. There's something about the airplane, its look, its history, and the men who've flown it. Uh, I was able to, as a young man, uh, look at the uh, number 32 <laughs> big tail beast that's been restored and flies the last flying hell diver. And I just love the airplane. So the Helldiver has been a unicorn of mine for a number of years. I've not built one. I've not featured one on the channel because it's one of those airplanes that to me, I feel like if I'm going to build it, I'm going to go completely bonkers in all the details. And this is not that. <laughs> this is an RC modeler, 1975 plans. Don Williams drew them up. Uh, laser cut kit off of eBay. And I've assembled the wings already. And I've got uh, some servos installed. I'm using mechanical retracts that were fun to set up. Not difficult, just fun. They're interesting. It's little things. Um, anyway, I'm using bell cranks as designed because I wanted to keep all of the servos central for serviceability, uh, but also reduce complexity and weight as well. I will say that the kit off of eBay is not the best out there. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it is a kit. It is a short kit and they mean a short kit. Like there's a lot of sticks and things that don't come with it. There's only laser cut parts and some of the laser cut parts are better than others. Um, most for the most part, the, the laser cutting is fine. Um, but there were some size discrepancies on uh, W8 uh, for the airfoil. Uh, didn't really fit that well. <laughs> and uh, alignment wasn't that great, so I had to, to really be careful. This is a true builder's kit. Again, slow progress, not going to be filming a whole tremendous amount of detail on this. I have covered a lot of the stuff uh, on this airplane already. There are some other things that I will be filming on. I will say that just about the wings, like this, the, the, the flap and the aileron would have been great to have that cut out of balsa because this ate a lot of sheeting and then like everything else was just sticks and which I had and can get plenty of. Um, it was kind of hard to like cut these slots for the tail end and I mean that would have been great to have. But the real kicker about the kit is over here. So yeah, the, uh, the fuselage. Here's the side former for the fuselage. Uh, it's 1 8 inch ply, and then there's a doubler on the forward half. The problem with that is that you have curvy formers that this is supposed to wrap around. Now I can soak this in ammonia or steam this, but bending a quarter inch thick of plywood is not gonna work. This plywood should have clearly been 1 8 inch balsa. And I don't fault the cutter for this. Let me explain. The cutter is looking at the plans, thinking how can I best utilize space and material and do this as economical as possible. I guarantee that this cutter does not build every single one of these airplanes to figure out what's right and what's wrong. He's doing best guess. And I can appreciate that. Uh, I did reach out to the seller, asked if I could get parts cut in the right material. Haven't heard anything back. I honestly didn't expect to. So that's where we get to the composite. So clearly this is dirty, but flexible, right? And this is with the doubler in place. So being able to bend this slowly around those curves is actually going to be possible. It's going to slow down the progress a little bit because I won't be able to use CA glues, uh, but I can use Gorilla Glue and tape and that should be just fine. So this will continue to move forward. I hope to have this flying by the fall after the corn is cut. <laughs> so uh, there will be some progress on this uh, as it happens. Now, uh, for power, I am again going with Sunny Sky and ZTW equipment in the airplane from Buddy RC. I know it's going to be a solid performer. Again, this is going to be a Dash 1 model. So there are little things here and there, little details like solid flaps, not perforated flaps, uh, a spinner, 
uh, sports skill kinds of things that I'll be able to familiarize myself with the Helldiver platform, the silhouette in the sky, how it flies, how it behaves, as well as smaller flies worse. <laughs> the saying goes, bigger flies better. If I can teach myself how to fly the Helldiver on a smaller platform, I'll be better off for once I go to the big platform. A little foreshadowing. <laughs> so, with those things in mind, that's all I'm going to say about the Helldiver for now. It's been a fun build so far, make balsa dust again. Uh, but let's get on to the third project. All right, this is a Transavia PL-12 air truck. <laughs> This uh, this airplane has been recognized by some of my friends from some movie that I've actually never seen. Uh, but this is an agricultural airplane from Australia, which is super cool. I've wanted a civilian airplane for quite some time. Ever since I did the restoration on the um, on the Tri-Pacer. So with that in mind, I was on the lookout for a civilian airplane and you guys may or may not know but i like weird stuff and this clearly fits the bill i'm going to insert a little picture of the airplane it's weird <laughs> it's just weird but i love it it's weird in all the good ways um but being an agricultural airplane uh it, it was designed to carry heavy loads and uh, dump those loads. And so there's like a hopper that's like right on the CG, but being a sesquiplane, it's got some stability things that are really cool. Uh, it's an interesting talking piece. This model came to me as, as you see it, <laughs> uh, but the, the gentleman who built it but never finished it had passed away. I'll be giving more details as I get into this build because I think those details are important to carry on the legacy. The, the spouse of the gentleman uh, just wanted this to go to a home where it would be appreciated and flown. And I will certainly do my best to do that. Now, there are a number of things about this fuselage that need to change. Uh, first and foremost, as you can see, is I will be changing from glow to electric. Number one, the fuel tank for this airplane is built in. I cannot access it. Why? Because the cowl is fully sheeted out and not cut free. So I can't even, I can't even access the engine. So if there was anything wrong with the carburetor or the cylinder or the tank, I would have to disassemble the model. I don't like that situation. So I'm going to be cutting free the cowl in order to get access to remove the engine and the, the tank for the fuel. Uh, because I, I just don't want to mess with that. This is such an awkward airplane that I want to keep flying as, as long as possible, but I don't want to have to worry about maintaining it. It does have a really nice Moki two-stroke glow engine that would be perfect to power this model, and it would make all the fun noises, but it would saturate wood with, with glow fuel because a lot of this hasn't even been sealed yet, uh, especially where the exhaust comes out. I mean, there's all of these things about this airplane that's like, I would have built it differently if I was intended for glow. So I'm gonna go through the effort since it's at this current stage of the fuselage and make modifications for electric power. Again, Sunny Sky Motors from Buddy RC, ZTW ESC from Buddy RC. Uh, I'm using my usual FR Sky radio stuff and all of these things, but there's a lot of opportunity for some amazing detail on this model. The, the, the canopy uh, on the cockpit and everything about this airplane, there's so much more I can add to it. And I wanna cover the tail real quick. So let me go put this down, bring the tail up here and talk about that a little bit. So with a wingspan of 84 inches, <laughs> We have one wing along with its associated stuff. Um, yeah, the wings are basically done. I don't have ailerons or flaps, so those need to be built, um, which really isn't difficult. It just needs to be done. Everything is glassed and primed. There's a little bit of, of wrinkling that I would like to try to address more. So a little bit more finish work. 
but we've got a really good foundation here. Now, I want to talk about the servos. All right, so each wing inside has four servos. That means four servo connections every time I take this airplane to the field. I have a solution for that, and I want to talk about it in another video, but I will address it. Now, inside this wing, I've taken it apart and looked at it, but I want to make a specific video about this because the way that the builder did serviceability on this airplane is something that I personally have never seen before. It's it's weird and it's finicky. It's got a it's got a, a a personality all on its own, but it's cool, and it might give you guys a really good idea to tackle challenges on your own project or maybe in a future project. So I really want to share that with you. All right. So other than that, I have nothing more. Oh, I do have something else. I do have something else. So if you haven't figured it out or made the connections. Uh, I do videos for Dubro RC for their Dubro 101 series. And I'm happy to do it because again, I love sharing this hobby. I love teaching people how to do different things in the hobby. And uh, I have just been very, very fortunate to work with such great people over there. There's a reason why I have a Dubro sticker in my shop in the background and on my trailer. And I talk about Dubro everywhere I go literally the finest quality hardware you can get in the hobby. And I am just very touched that uh, Dubro wants to pitch in and help with some of the hardware that is needed to complete the Transavia, which is super, super awesome. Uh, yes, I am going to have to do some videos with those materials, which is great. Uh, I really look forward to sharing with some of those things that are that are new to you, uh, but also new to other people that maybe just new to Dubro. So keep an eye on the Dubro channel as well. And uh, with that said, I, again, I can't be more expressive about how grateful I am for wonderful people in this hobby. People are really what make this hobby great. It's not the airplanes. And uh, if you don't believe me, all you have to do is go out to an event sometime. Seriously awesome people everywhere I go. I do have one more project that I want to talk about, but I don't want to talk about it now. <laughs> it's a foamy project. It's a big foamy project and it's another scale project. And it is something that I guarantee the vast majority of you will have never seen before in RC. And I'm really excited to build that over this winter as well. So, that's the cliffhanger I'm going to leave you guys on at the end of this video. There are four projects coming your way, not three. And I look forward to sharing each and every one of them with you. So stay tuned. Hang on for a great ride this winter. And until next time, guys, continue building your flying works of art.